For God alone, my soul waits in silence. From Him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will all of you attack a man to batter him like a leaning wall, a tottering fence? They only plan to thrust him down from his high position. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. Selah. For God alone, O oh my soul, wait in silence. For my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in Him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances, they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. Set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God, and that to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love. For you will render to a man according to his work. Well, it's good to regather this morning, and, and whether you're worshiping today with us live or whether you're worshiping with us online, uh, we all have one thing in common. Uh, we, we know that this has been a year of change, and we know that this is another opportunity, as we have every single day, to lift up our worship and to lift up our praise to God. We know that over the past few months, many decisions have, have been made that uh, have created circumstances that none of us saw coming a year or so ago. This time last year, for example, uh, none of us had ever even heard of things like social distancing or even thought about wearing masks out in public and, and this kind of thing. Uh, often barriers are set up to, to protect you. Uh, you notice we have, we have barriers between the seats and barriers up here among uh, the, the front of the auditorium to, 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 to help encourage staying healthy and that kind of thing. And, and, and this is something that we've all become accustomed to. Uh, we, we've gone to some extreme measures, not only in our church, but uh, out in public in uh, things like wearing masks and using barricades and using safety measures. Uh, but ultimately, I want us to remember one thing today. I want us to remember that God is still in charge. Always has been, is today, and He always will be. And God is good. God is good. Even in the shadow of evil created by man, which... Is a part of life since Genesis 3. We experience the reality of the, the, the wicked, evil heart of mankind. But God's plans will always prevail. When our plans are shaken, which I'm sure they have been for you as they have been for me many instances along the way over the last few months, we need to stake our life in the fact that God is consistent. God is good. And no person, no pursuit, no possession should ever take priority over God. If, if we could just put this psalm, Psalm 62, in, in one sentence, that would be it. That would be it. We could just uh, sum it up in that little statement that no person, no pursuit, no possession takes priority over God. Uh, since Easter, we've been working our way through book two of the Psalms, Psalm 42 to Psalm 72. And today we come to Psalm 62, and I hope you have your Bible open. Uh, in Psalm 62, David was surrounded again by conspirators who were trying to undermine his leadership. 
and even take his life. This is possibly as it was in Psalm 61, uh, what is recorded in 2 Samuel chapters 15 through 18, when David is running away from his own son, Absalom. And I can't even imagine how painful and how stressful that time in David's life must have been. But David turned to his secure refuge. David put his trust in God alone for his salvation. Over the next two months or so, we're going to have some real tests before us, even as we have up to this point in 2020. Battles of survival are going on all around us. As you know, politically, uh, some say we're facing the most important election that we've ever faced in history. You know, it's interesting, I think I've heard that about 15 or 16 times in my lifetime. But it's true. Every time it's true. And this is an important uh, time of elections that will take place for us. Physically, you know we continue uh, to battle COVID-19. Uh, this, this creates for us a full court press on decisions about, as Beth said earlier, kids returning to school and parents maintaining product productive work schedules in the midst of all that's going on with school-age kids. I wonder how many people are going to survive economically through the pressures that are put on worldwide uh, with this pandemic. But we have no choice but to deal with these issues and other battles that are real and that potentially could be fatal to us. We'll be tempted to put our hope and trust and priorities in other things. But David reminds us of how important it is to always and only put our ultimate trust in, in God. So Psalm 62 challenges us to check our spiritual temperature. Um, it's most common for us to experience that. In fact, you've had your temperature. If you've been out in public uh, to any degree, you've probably had your temperature checked. And if you go to uh, school or the dentist or to a restaurant or even sometimes entering church, uh, you're going to be tested with a thermometer to show the, 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 the internal struggle that's going on in your body for health. But what about the mental and emotional and spiritual temperatures that we have. Well, Psalm 62 points us to the only gauge that we can evaluate where we are spiritually and even where we are emotionally. Our refuge in every area of life is our trust in God alone. David put his trust in God alone. And I recommend that for you and me today as well. So let's look at it. You have your Bible open to Psalm 62. You've heard it read. And I want us to just continue to think about one question as we move through this passage today. Why should we follow David's example and put our trust in God alone for our help, for our refuge, in our deepest needs in life? Four reasons. Let's look at them. First of all, God alone is always trustworthy. God alone is always trustworthy. We see that in verses 1 and 2. David always trusted God alone. Verse 1, he says, For God alone my soul waits in silence. From Him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. And I shall not be greatly shaken. So David affirmed with his whole being, his soul, who God is. So what is your soul? Your, your soul is that part of you that, that can't be cut open by a surgeon and explored. I mean, nobody, nobody can see your soul. It's that part of you, though, that most effectively relates to God. It's your, your mind, your will, and your emotions. And David was able to find calm in the middle of the storm because he trusted God alone. 
The natural tendency during a stormy time in our life is to be anxious, isn't it? I mean, we, we see that often in our life when, when testing times come, when storms come. We have the tendency to be anxious. But David, on the other hand, was restful. The scripture says here, I wait in, for you in silence. Instead of being anxious, he waited on God in silence. He had learned that there's, there's no peace like being safe and surrendered to God's care. Now that doesn't mean we do not take natural precautions. I mean, David was obviously not standing out in the middle of an open field saying, come and get me to his enemies. He was using his common sense, but his ultimate trust was in the care and safety of his surrender to God. And so he waited in silence. And David demonstrated that nothing could shake him when his ultimate trust was in God, when his ultimate refuge was God alone. He knew that God was trustworthy, and so do I. And I pray today that you do as well. When, I, when, I was, when, when my son was in the fourth grade, his, his school class went on an adventure trip to Placard Environmental Educational Center over in uh, Loris, near Loris, between Finkley. You know where Finkley is, right? Between Finkley and Loris. And halfway through the adventure, the instructor placed the students in two parallel rows, and he asked the students to reach out and join hands with each other. Now, these were fourth grade students, like maybe 10 years old. And so the instructor got them to hold their hands out and hold their hands together. And then he climbed six feet up into a tree on a little platform that he had there. And he turned his back to the students and he crossed his arms like this. And he started to fall back. And the students looked up at him and saw this, what looked to them like a giant guy. And they looked across at each other. And the students just dropped their arms and stepped back. <laughs> and I want you to know that instructor hit the ground with a thud. <laughs> and I'm sure today his back still hurts from falling out of that tree like that. But the students that the instructor trusted were not trustworthy. But that is not like God. God, on the other hand, is always trustworthy. In, in Luke chapter 8, Jesus was on a boat with his disciples and a storm came across the lake, and it looked like their lives were in real danger. Jesus was asleep on a cushion in the bow of the boat. And they, they, they woke him up, um, and calming the storm, Jesus looked at his disciples, and he said to them in verse 25 of Luke chapter 8, Where is your faith? Now, I want you to think about that question with me today. Where is your faith? Is your faith in a trustworthy source? Is your faith in a source as secure as God? See, what determines how you navigate the pressures of life through your mind, will, and your emotions is where you put your trust where you put your faith. And ultimately, where you put your trust makes all the difference in the world and how you navigate life. It's not natural or easy to wait patiently and silently in the time of a crisis, in the time of a storm. But notice what David did. He waited in silence even though there were many voices outside giving him all kinds of advice, I'm sure David had heard these voices before. Remember earlier in his life, before he became king of Israel, King Saul was pursuing him constantly to kill him because he was jealous of David. He was out to destroy him. And I'm sure many voices cried into David's ear, why don't you just kill Saul and go ahead and take the position that God has already promised you. He's promised you you're going to be king. So go ahead and take Saul out and take the position that God has promised you. David didn't do that. David learned not to listen to outside voices. He learned 
to listen to the voice of God calming his soul over all the other voices that were calling out to him in life. So, like David, I want to challenge you and me today to learn to listen to the voice of God as God's voice clearly speaks to us. Why? Because God alone is always trustworthy. You can trust him. Secondly, David reminds us in Psalm 62 that God alone is always encouraging We see that in verses 3 and 4. David found encouragement in acknowledging his trouble. He didn't just cover it up. He didn't just make like it wasn't there. He acknowledged the fact that he was in trouble. Look at verse 3. He says, How long will all of you attack the man to batter him like a leaning wall or a tottering fence? The only plan... They only plan to thrust him down from his high position. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. See, in verses 3 and 4, we have a realistic picture of David's life. David saw himself in deep trouble. He compared his experience to a leaning wall or a tottering fence. In other words, he realized that he needed support. He needed outside support to sustain his life. His leadership was being undermined through enemies telling lies about him and saying one thing to his face and another thing to his back. Undermining leadership through slander and hypocrisy is not something new, is it? I mean, it's been around for the ages. And David recognized it, but he was not toppled by it. His trust was not in the wrong source. He knew that trusting the wrong source could be dangerous, and that's true for you and me today as well. Trusting the wrong source is a sad cause for failure in many lives. Who do you put your trust in? Ultimately, always. We need to understand that even as good as the best marriages are, a spouse cannot replace God. Your family cannot replace God. Friends cannot replace God. Your work cannot replace God. A counselor, a mentor, a pastor, a church cannot replace God. God alone, and that's why your relationship with God is so critically important. God alone can be trusted in all situations, in all times. Only God can be trusted in all situations, at all times. And David knew that. And so he put his complete trust in God alone in his times of trouble. See, the faith inside of David was stronger than the forces and the voices outside of David. And you're going to be tempted over the next few months to listen to a lot of voices from the outside. And I challenge you to learn to listen to the voice of God alone, to always trust in every situation you face. Last month, I sat across the table from a dear friend of mine. I mean, I've known him for years. And as we sat across the breakfast table, he shared with me that he was strongly considering divorcing his wife. He looked straight down at the eggs on his plate that he couldn't eat. In fact, he said, Ronnie, I haven't been able to eat for months. He shared that he and his wife had just simply grown apart over the years. No unfaithfulness, just no relationship. He said, all the children have grown up and left the house, and in our relationship, we've just experienced no intimacy at all for the last several years. And here's what he said, and I quote, I cannot imagine spending the rest of my life not being happy. I waited in silence, 
dead silence for a few minutes. It seemed like hours. And then I said something that he didn't expect. Here's what I said, and I quote, I said, what has God told you? What has God told you? Be very careful not to follow your heart and not to follow the voices of people around you. The only voice that matters is the voice of God. What has God told you to do? I looked over at the waitress. I asked the waitress for the check. Ask her for a takeout box because I couldn't eat my breakfast either. <laughs> and I'm too cheap to leave it there. And we got up and walked out. Well, that afternoon he texted me. And here's what he said. Again, I quote, Thank you for your time and wisdom. Sorry if I disappointed you. And I immediately texted him back and I said, You haven't disappointed me. In fact, I'm encouraged that you trust me. See, I knew him well enough to know that he wasn't trusting me. He had built a life of trust in God, and God alone was going to be encouraging to him. Well, thirdly, we see in verses 5 through 8 that God alone is always reliable, always reliable. Verse 5, for God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in Him at all times. O people, pour out your hearts before Him. God is a refuge. For us. Once again, David, as he often does in the Psalms, turns not only just to giving praise to God and claiming the power that he has in God, but he turns to preaching to himself and preaching to others. David was pouring his heart out to God because he knew that God alone is reliable. David knew a thing or two about God. Look at the passage. God, he refers to as his rock. That means that God is a firm foundation to hold and sustain life, even through the roughest times of life. God is a solid anchor. That means that when the storms come, God alone will never let him go. He recognizes God as his salvation. That means that when you trust him, he has saved you. He is saving you now, and He will save you for eternity. He looks at God for His source of security. In other words, one day everything in life that we know is going to pass away except one thing. Except one thing. And that is the people and the relationships that are secure in God alone. Because God alone is always throughout eternity reliable. He refers to God as a fortress. That means that He's a refuge, a protector, a defender, a safe place. He upholds with His honor those who trust in Him. And I know that because you're here today, because you're worshiping with us today, you want to have that same kind of trust in the reliability of God Himself. Trust means that you attach yourself to another for survival. See, there are going to be situations that you are going to face over the next few months where you will need a reliable source to trust, to put your hope in. Who are you going to trust? Are you going to trust the government? I, I hope not. Are you going to trust your friends? Well, most of the time friends will hold you up, but not all the time. Not all the time. They can't always be with you. Doctors, maybe you're going to trust in doctors. Well, I mean, I wouldn't distrust doctors, but I wouldn't totally put my trust in them. I talked to my dad last week, and my dad's doctor 
that's been caring for him for years. My dad's 88 years old. His doctor retired. And so his doctor took my dad's files, his case, and handed them over to another doctor. And in my dad's words, a lady doctor. <laughs> I'd like to be a fly on that wall, I'm telling you. Uh, but anyway, the, the new doctor took the medications, 12 medications that the old doctor had prescribed for my dad and he was taking every day, and reduced them down to two medications. And my dad has felt better in the last few weeks than he has for years. Doctors will tell you different things. Different doctors think different ways. So we can't always trust all doctors all the time. Only God can be trusted, as verse 8 says, at all times. So what does it mean to pour your heart out to God like David did? David sat in silence, then he poured his heart out to God. Well, it means that you just tell Him, what you feel. You tell Him that you're thankful that you know Him and that you trust Him. You tell Him what hurts and what frustrates you. Do you see the, the mixture of David's emotions coming out in this prayer? One time he'll be praising God and giving glory to God. The next time he'll be pouring out his heart to God. And that's a, a good thing to be able to do that. But most importantly, the second time it's repeated, David sat in silence. But then he poured his heart out to God. He told him how he felt. A few years ago, Casting Crowns wrote a song called The Voice of Truth. And the essence of that song describes having faith to stay connected to God through Jesus, regardless of doubts in the face of storms and threats. The chorus says, But the waves are calling out my name and they laugh at me, reminding me of all the times I've tried before and failed. The waves, they keep on telling me time and time again, Boy, you'll never win. You'll never win. But the voice of truth tells me a different story. The voice of truth says, Do not be afraid. The voice of truth says, This is for my glory. Out of all the voices calling out to me, I will choose to listen and believe the voice of truth. As the words of that song spun through my mind this past week, I literally came to tears. I mean, my mind went back to times when I've tried and tried on my own and listened to voices other than the voice of God and found myself in trouble. But then to see the times that I've turned away from that kind of advice, away from that kind of conversation, and turned totally to God, how God has lifted me up. And out of all the voices calling out to me, I've chosen to listen and believe the voice of truth. Many voices shouting at you today. David would advise us that over all the voices... Listen to the voice of truth, because God alone is always encouraging. His voice, His voice is the voice of truth. And then finally today, God alone is always superior to status and wealth. Now, make sure you don't misunderstand what David is telling us here. David was a man of great status. Status is not bad. David was a man of greatest wealth. Wealth is not bad. The caution comes in trusting status and wealth over God. Never fall into that trap. Look at verse 9. Those of low estate, but are a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than breath. Put no trust in extortion. Set no vain hope on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice I've heard this, that power belongs to God, and that you, to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love. For you will render to a man according to his work. He's saying, be sure. 
Be sure that what you put your trust in is trustworthy. And God alone is always, at all times, in all conditions, totally trustworthy. The devices of men, David says, such as extortion, stolen goods, and riches, are even honestly gained wealth and resources, are not something that you put your total ultimate trust in. We look around our Grand Strand today and we see how people measure success. Some people measure success by honest work or reaching goals or finding yourself or having a happy, comfortable retirement or having an ocean view or working smarter rather than harder. All these kinds of things. But just remember, God alone is always superior to man. And God never fails. Never. The steadfast love that David attributed to God has been revealed to you and me today in the perfect way, and that's through Jesus Christ, our Savior. See, God actually became one of us. God demonstrated His love for us in that while we were still sinners, separated from God by our sin, God came to earth, lived as a man, sacrificed his life for you and me to set us free from the penalty of our sin, which separates us from him. So let me ask you today, have you trusted God for your salvation? Are you ultimately putting your trust in him? That simply means that you have realized that you're a sinner, realized that your sin separates you from God, realized that Jesus Christ shed his blood and sacrificed his life for your sin. And you've accepted that gift of salvation for yourself. You've trusted him. you put your ultimate trust in him. And you want the rest of your life to be fully devoted to him. So your life is hopeless without God. I don't care what you have. I don't care who you are. Your life is hopeless without God. So today I challenge you to put your trust in Him rather than the wrong source. Putting your hope in the wrong source can be extremely dangerous. That's why many marriages fail today. And I'm not just talking about the ones that end in divorce. Trusting your spouse to do what only God can do is fatal. The same is true about your family and friends and counselors and mentors and even pastors and churches. God alone is superior. So trust Him today. Trust Him above everything else. Last week I called that friend back and invited him back this time to lunch. And as he devoured his meal, I knew that something had changed over the past month. Before I even asked him about his relationship with his wife, I could tell what the answer was going to be, but I went ahead and finally asked him anyway. And here's what he said, and again I quote. He said, we still have a long way to go, but God is working a miracle. He saved our marriage. End of quote. See, in times of trouble, in times of stress, follow David's example. Learn to put your total trust as you wait for God and put your trust in Him. Please don't waste this opportunity that we are living in today to draw close to God. The opportunity has never been better for us to hear the groanings of hope that the world is crying out for. The opportunity has never been better to show that we believe that this moment in history is designed for us by God. The opportunity has never been better for us to demonstrate that we believe this moment in history is a gift from God and not a curse. The opportunity has never been better for us to seek comfort from God 
alone. The opportunity has never been better for us to honestly think about death and the reality of heaven and the reality of hell. The opportunity has never been better for us to treat sin seriously. The opportunity has never been better for us to share our witness to the truth of the glory of Jesus. How the glory of Jesus can take a life like ours and transform that life and turn it into something that is usable by God for His highest glory. Yes, this day, today, is a day of opportunity when we learn to put our trust in God alone. We turn to Him and Him alone for our deepest level of help with our deepest troubles. So don't miss this opportunity to trust God alone and demonstrate through our deepest needs that we know beyond a shadow of a doubt and trust Him to meet those deepest needs in the power of His love and the power of Jesus. So how can we apply this psalm to our life today? Two ways. Two simple ways. First of all, no matter how difficult the trial, trust God alone. He's our strong refuge. So who or what are you facing today as your greatest battle? And who are you trusting in in the process of fa facing that greatest battle in your life today? The second application point is that the character of God can always be trusted. So He's, as David says, our loving refuge. So in what areas do you feel a little bit paralyzed? Well, turn to the character of God for your refuge. How do you do that? Well, in the process of this battle of life that we're facing today, you're either running to God or you're running away from God. I want to challenge you to run to God with all your might his arms are open wide to receive you. So run to Him for your life filter today. Run into His arms because He alone is trustworthy. How do I know that? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life.